Hi, Cal Johnson here and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect in Premiere Pro 2.0. We'll first look at creating a simple picture-in-picture -picture, and then we'll add some effects to make it really stand out. Okay, so I'm starting with the clip that I want the picture-in-picture -picture to play on top of already in my timeline. This is a shot that we did using a Luma key, which I'm not going to get into in this tutorial, but what I do want to point out is the framing. Notice how when shooting I left room on the right-hand side for the picture-in-picture -picture effect. Creating the picture-in-picture -picture is actually very easy. I'll go to my project panel and select the video clip that I want to use for the picture-in-picture -picture effect and double click it to open it up in my source monitor. I'll set in and out points for the portion of the clip that I want to use and I'm going to set the selection option to take only video because I don't want to use the clip's audio in this case. Now I'll drag and drop this clip onto my timeline so that it's over top of the first clip. Remember that if you don't have a track available, you can simply drag and drop a clip from your source panel into the dark gray area above your video tracks, or in the case of audio, below your audio tracks, and a new track will be created. With the newly added clip selected, let's go to our effects controls panel, twirl open the motion effect properties, and reduce the scale. You can do this by either clicking on the scale value and entering in a new value, or you can place your cursor over the scale value so that it changes to the shuttle control icon. Then left hand mouse click and drag to the left or right to decrease or increase scale. You can also adjust the scale of the clip directly in the program monitor by using the bounding box handles. In this case we want to decrease the scale value, something like 45% should work well for this clip. Notice I have the option for Uniform Scale selected. I can turn this off, but uneven adjustments to the scale's height and width will cause the picture-in-picture -picture image to look distorted. Once you have the clip scaled down to approximately the right size, reposition it by left-hand mouse clicking on it in the Program Monitor, hold down the left-hand mouse button, and drag it into position. Adjust the scale again if you need to. So now that we have our basic picture-in-picture, -picture, let's add some effects that will make this look much more professional. If you're in a rush, here's two effects that are really easy to set up. In the Effects panel, twirl open the Video Effects, then Perspective, then drag and drop the effects Bevel Alpha, and drop Shadow onto your picture-in-picture -picture clip. In the Effects Controls panel, click on the Toggle On Off button for the Drop Shadow effect to turn it off for now. Let's twirl open the properties for the Bevel Alpha effect. Now this is a fairly subtle effect, so if you're using it for the first time, I'd suggest you set the Light Intensity setting to 1, its strongest setting, and then increase your edge thickness to something like 10 so that you can get an idea of what this effect does. Notice how it creates a beveled edge to the clip. Adjust the edge thickness and light intensity to taste. You can also play around with the light angle and the light color. There are no hard fast rules here, just play around with these settings until you're happy. I like my beveled edge to be not too strong and I'll leave the light angle and color on their default settings. When you're done, click the twirly key to hide the bevel edge effect properties. Now let's take a look at the drop shadow effect. Click on the Toggle On Off button again to turn the Drop Shadow effect back on, then click its twirly key so that you can see the effect properties. Again, all of these properties can be set to taste. For example, I'm going to set the opacity to 40%, increase the shadow distance to 55, and set the softness to 40. Everything else I'll just leave at their default settings. Once again, click the twirly key to hide the Drop Shadow effect properties when you're finished. So now we've got a pretty decent picture-in-picture -picture effect going. Another neat trick is to add the basic 3D effect, again from the Perspective folder under Video Effects in your Effects panel. Expand the properties for the basic 3D effect in your Effects Controls panel and set the Swivel and Tilt properties to make it look like the picture-in-picture -picture screen is placed at an angle. You may need to reposition your picture-in-picture -in, -picture in the Program Monitor. If the drop shadow looks like it's expanding too much, try dragging the drop shadow effect in your effects controls panel to the bottom of the stack so it's applied after the basic 3D effect. Let's look at creating a frame for your picture-in-picture -picture effect to give it a nice professional touch. 
It's at this point in the tutorial that I'm wondering if you can hear that my cat is giving himself a bath in the background, but I'm just going to keep going anyway. What I've done is created a new sequence called Picture in Picture and added some clips with transitions in between. Next, I'll click on the Create a New Item button at the bottom of my project panel and select Title to create a new title. I'll call this title Frame and click OK. The Titler tool opens up. Now I'll select the Rectangle tool from the toolbar by left hand mouse clicking it and then create a rectangle that covers the entire viewable area. Start at the top left corner, left hand mouse click and while holding the left hand mouse button down, drag your mouse from top left to bottom right. Release the mouse and use the bounding box handles to line up the edges of the rectangle with the edges of the viewable area. The color of the box doesn't matter. In the Title Properties panel, uncheck the Fill option box. The rectangle will disappear. Now twirl open your Strokes options and click Add for Inner Strokes. If you haven't done so already, turn on the Show Video option for the Titler tool by clicking on the option box so that there is a check mark inside it. This allows us to see the video wherever the current time indicator is located on our timeline. Notice we now have a black border around our image. Back to our stroke options, set the fill type to bevel. You won't see any difference because currently the highlight color and shadow color are the same. Click on the highlight color palette button and select a lighter color. You can also use the eyedropper tool to select a color from your video image. You can now see we're getting a nice beveled edge around our image. The size and color can be adjusted to taste. You can also turn on the Lit option so that the beveled edge looks like it's being lit from a specific angle. The light angle can be adjusted as well as the light magnitude. Turning on the Tube option will give your frame a rounded appearance. Play around with different combinations of all of these settings until you get something you're happy with. When you're finished, close the Titler tool. Ok, so where did our frame go? Well, we still have to add the frame title to our picture in picture timeline, so I'll just select it in the project panel and drag and drop it on top of my video clips. If it's not long enough, simply extend it so it covers all of the video clips underneath. Now click the tab for my main sequence in the timeline panel to bring it forward, and then nest my picture in picture sequence by dragging it from my project panel and dropping it onto video track 2. Once again I can scale, and position my picture in picture nested sequence just like I did with the video clip at the beginning of the tutorial. If you want to get rid of the audio that came along with the nested sequence, simply select the nested sequence clip on the timeline, then right hand mouse click on it, and from the pop up menu select Unlink. Then just click anywhere in an empty space to deselect the clip, select just the audio, and then hit delete. Here's the finished result with the basic 3D and drop shadow effects added. In this next example, I animated the tilt property for the basic 3D effect and the scale property under the motion effect to make the picture in picture spin into view. This example simply has the video transition multi spin applied. You may find that some video transitions work well with your picture in picture effect, while others, particularly the 3D transitions, do not. This final example uses a simple cross dissolve. Don't you just love cross dissolves? Hey, that's it for this tutorial. Experiment and have fun.